Hey there everyone and welcome to another Neo Monsters PvP video. This is some clips from February. I promise you this is the last video going over like really old clips. Um, we're going to get to some newer stuff very soon. This is looking at the team which I played in February and I think I played it and got top 10. I can't remember exactly but basically this is a better version of the team which I used in January. In January I made it with like sleep immune stuff with one on one. I was just messing about and having fun. I then tried to make a more competitive version which worked out really well. So the things which, uh, like, I don't care about my team falling asleep at this point because I've got a high-speed purifier next in line. And if things go well, as they did in this battle, um, the Gangrilla and the Stratostrike can really get to work. If I can get a kill on Stratostrike, then Gangrilla can just start sweeping. And this team is built so even if one-on-one -on -one can't be used because they have a counter to it, it's still going to work well. And bear in mind also, I did the LM Accelerator at the beginning, which is what make, is making my Gangrel and Stratostrike so good at this point, and will make my Stratostrike so good with a double survivor when it gets to that. But if they kill any one of my monsters other than Leogeist, then the Bobby Boom is going to wake up the Leogeist, and that's a really fast accelerated Leogeist. It's got LM Accelerator on it, so while the enemies are asleep, it will get charged and it will just annihilate the enemy team. This actually works really well as a team, and it's how I like to build one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I've probably done more one-on-one -on -one videos than anyone else on YouTube, and uh, I love it as a strategy, especially Strat Strike. And yeah, little bits of tips there of like how I would choose to do it and how I make it work. So yes, it's getting to the point now, his team is woken up. I'm looking at things, my mid game is very much like the team which I played in January, and it's basically sleep and stun control. So I'm taking out the Motor Dragon, he didn't use the Swift Unwanted next, uh, Swift Unwanted friend. Um, so I want to kill the Motor Dragon before it gets to use that. And then I'm going for Iwizard rather than Seer Guard because I'm getting rid of the stun immune. So I'm keeping him stunnable. I don't care too much about my monsters dying because you'll see here I get a turn and I'm able to stun him. So I still keep some control. However, I'm actually in a really bad position at this point because I got that bronze shell. My other two monsters are on hold ground. So I'm not going to re fight my way out of this particularly well. However, when you look at the number of monsters we've got in our teams, he's got eight. He's got half his team left, and I've pretty much got my whole team left. He's going to have to do a lot of work to try and get out of this one, and he probably can't do it. Um, I paused for a while there, trying to decide, do I do do I add another Nautopod to my team, or do I do LM Accelerate to make the Nautopod th th that's there better? Um, better to go with the with the extra Nautopod, really. They're great monsters if you haven't faced Nautocruiser. Believe me, it's a very good monster. I wouldn't personally use it outside of Link Storm because I think the LM Accelerate is like the really big thing there and being able to bring in the Nautopod so fast. But um, it's, yeah, it's definitely very strong in general too. So now I can start getting back into the battle. I kill off the Seer Guard and I'm about to get asleep with my Vixirid. Um, in terms of what I can sleep... I'm going to go for the Drachion. I don't particularly want to face the Death Revenge, and it's got the Raw Blood that's charged, so it will be a nasty sweeper. And then I've got to take out this Asterios. Um, so I'm going to kill that with the Counter Strike now. And I take a little while trying to decide should I kill the Magmarinus or the Capybaragon? Um, I know what he's got left in his team. He's got a Moku, and he's got the little bunny from Bundam, which I killed at the beginning. In hindsight, I should have gone for the Capybaragon. I, I kind of knew that I should have gone for it at the time, but I wanted to kill Magmarinus, which is why I paused. Um, so yeah, if I killed off the Capybaragon, he wouldn't have Link Fire, so he wouldn't actually be able to use the Link Slayer Bane all with Magmarinus. Um, it would have been a better choice, because he's going to use Swallow on the Capybaragon to take out anything he wants here, which is the, the Penguin Eater. Uh, if I'd done it the other way around, I probably would have been able to just give turn and Slayer Bane all with the Penguin Eater at this point, and then, you know, won the battle. Uh, but I had to put in a bit more work. But Vigazirid is excellent for taking down Moku, does massive damage, and then I used the Time Strike Double to take out the bunny. So from here, it's pretty much clean-up phase. Um, so yeah, great match against Interference. If you don't know Interference, he's one of the one of the best guys in the in the community, really nice guy. Um, it's on both the forum and the Discord. So yeah, Link against Link Fire, and this next team is going to be Link again. Someone using Link Earth, which is obviously the worst thing you want to face with Link Storm, and not only that, this front line is like a full counter to one-on-one. -on -one. He's got an Insomnia monster, he's got Dracarosa, which is um, Purify Mist, so if it remains awake, it just wakes up the team. And then he's got a Camouflage monster. So I'm not using one-on-one -on -one here, I'm having to use a slightly different strategy of 
of what I'm going to do. So I didn't use NM Accelerate with Nauta Cruiser because I don't think I can really get enough value out of my team in that time. And by doing the NM Accelerate, it's basically saying this Nauta Cruiser is going to be useless for like 150 seconds. So they wouldn't need to kill it. So instead I used the Swift Charge on itself so it forces them to kill it so I can start getting some damage in with um, like the Gangrilla and stuff. Yeah, he took down my Leo guys there. I've been able to take down the Sanctus Stag though, so I can try and get into this battle. Timberlord's going to be a big problem. That just wrecks Link Storm, and this Dracarosa, as you can see, is wiping out my team. So I can sleep something here. Um, either the Dracarosa or the Tricranium. Tricranium, if it has the secret skill, it can purify his team. That would be nasty. And the main thing is, Tricranium's going to get a turn soon, so I can at least make it skip skip its turn at this point. I then give turn to the um, Gangrilla to heal it that way with the Repent, because that's much faster. And then I'm going to try and take down this Timberlord before it kills too many of my things. Retaliate puts it low, but not quite low enough for me to kill it with Ryzen. I could do the Time Strike double hitting Tricranium, but that would wake it up, and I want to make him like put in some effort to wake it up. I have to waste a turn to do that. So instead I just use the Time's Up and then kill it off with my Strata Strike. Unfortunately, though, all my monsters have low HP, so, you know, he's going to keep killing through things. That Sleep Revenge didn't hit anything. It either hit Tricranium or Terragar, so nothing went to sleep. And then he wants to take down my Ryzen and stuff before it gets a turn, so he uses Defang on them. The second Sleep now hits Dracarosa, so that's ideal. Now, I want to address um, in my past videos where I was showing the team that I used in January, and it's basically got this kind of mid-game. I noticed a lot of people saying like, oh, you won with sleep in that, like you got lucky and that kind of thing. This team is literally built to sleep. Uh, that's what it has. It has three sleeps in there. The instantly hypnotized from um, Vic Zerid, the sleep revenge from that, and also the dreamy entrance from Malwing. So my mid game is like, I try and open them up to stun. I then either stun and sleep them or do a mixture, as you can see here. And that's kind of how I win. So... Um, also bear in mind that the clips which I pick to, to show to people, I'm trying to pick the most entertaining clips. So they will often be where, like, I'm losing and make a comeback, or like this particular clip where I was facing Link Earth, which is horrible for my team, but I was able to, um, to fight reasonably well enough and then win with the, the sleeps, um, you know, some targeted sleep, a bit of, a bit of luck with the sleep, and then the stun coming in as well. Um, the enemy team actually didn't have much stun protection at all. They just had a few random stun immunes, which is really what let me get back into the battle at this point, is I could just like completely stun his team and keep control. Uh, he doesn't get a single turn until the end of the battle. Well, yeah, for the rest of the battle. Um, and it's because of that stun, and it all come in together like that. So, yeah, anyway, I just wanted to say that because, um, you know, I'm critical of other people's videos on the internet, and I'll say, like, you know, oh, you made these terrible mistakes, or, like, this this person was actually, like, a really new player, so, like, you know, you basically just overpowered them. Um, and that kind of thing, just because, like, I like there to be good quality content from people to learn from and that kind of stuff, so I completely get why people will be like, you know, oh, you're just winning with sleep, but, like, that's literally what my team is meant to do, <laughs> um, and I'm picking clips for that. But I'll try, and, I'll try and bear in mind and not pick clips which are just, like, you know, me being stu stupidly lucky. Um, anyway, as you can see, I was able to take over with stun and win that way. Um, hope you enjoyed this clip, hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in another video soon.